Ah, welcome back to another f edition of First 1010 here of Hawk TV. I got the crew here, Billy, Jake, World's hosting as always. So guys, let's talk about the big brawl that happened this past Thursday. Of course Miles Garrett, Mason Rudolph. I've never seen somebody whack somebody in the head upside mm -hmm. the helmet with that, but let's, let's give our reactions on that. So did the media overreact? Was Garrett try to commit murder, did, do you agree with the NFL suspending him for the rest of the season? And did you think Mason Rudolph kind of got away with not really getting any big suspension, but he did got a $35,000 fine. So I'm going to start with you, uh, Billy. What do you think? Well, I'm, I'm a big Steelers fan, but I got to say, what is Mason Rudolph doing right now? Mason Rudolph has really been getting bashed in the head <laughs> left and right. Literally. At one point, they're taking off his face mask a few weeks ago, you know? And then this week, he's getting clocked in the head with his own helmet, <laughs> you know? And I just, you know, I, th I think Mason Rudolph kind of deserves what he's getting, but... So, so you're in agree of a Miles Garrett... Well, okay, what Miles Garrett did was not just at all. There was no reason for him to do it. It was the end of the game. They were already destroying them. What was the point of him hitting him in the head? So I completely understand that they were just directly, he was directly going after Mason Rudolph, but I do not understand why Mason Rudolph is not getting something. He only got a $35,000 um, fine. He, which is he initiated, first of all, the helmets coming off, which was seen. Um, everybody saw that. Uh, it was obvious within the cameras. And just throughout the entire process, he is pushing Miles Garrett to whack him in the head. So even though I'm a Steelers fan, I think Mason Rudolph should have gotten a heavier, you know. Suspension consequences. and fine consequences. You know, yeah. I, I don't think the fine was worth the fine. He's already making enough. Yeah. Like, that fine yeah. did, really didn't affect him. It's like taking a penny out of his pocket. No, serious. Honestly, I mean, Mason Rudolph, he started all the problems because Miles Garrett sacked him, whatever, sacked him, whatever. Mason Rudolph then puts his hands in Miles Garrett's face, like, what are you doing? He's an entire foot taller than you. You don't want to start this fight. And then while they're taking him to the ground, Mason Rudolph goes for a low blow to Miles Garrett. And obviously, if someone gives you a low blow, you're not just going to let it go by. So Miles Garrett retaliates. You know, he takes his helmet off, which after that point, it kind of got a little iffy. And then after he took his helmet off, they were still going at it. And then Miles Garrett swings the helmet after him, which that, at that point, Miles Garrett suspended indefinitely, in my opinion. I mean... You fight with someone, whatever. You whack someone with an aluminum helmet. I mean, he just came up with one of the worst concussions in NFL history, and you could have put him in a worse one that quickly. I mean, spending indefinitely, I agree with, at least for the rest of the season. In my opinion, it should be a clean 16 games, and, and Mason Rudolph should at least. Wait, you think Garrett should be suspended yes. 16 games? Yes, the rest of the season, and then however long it takes wow. for next season. I think really? it's worth. Yeah. It's a very. That, 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 okay. And then Mason Rudolph, in my opinion. I still think it's a little too much. That's but, way too much. And Mason Rudolph should get the same suspension. suspension that Marquise Pouncey gets. What was it three games? Yeah. Three yeah. or four games. Three That's games for Marquise? Well, I just got to say this right now. Marquise Pouncey, right here, right now, is a savage. This I, Stood up for his quarterback. He completely stood up for his quarterback. This guy was. All up in Miles Garrett's face. He was throwing heavy mm -hmm. punches. He was throwing haymakers right. out on there. his helmet. He right. was let, kicking. Let, let me let me interrupt real quick because as the media guys, we all want to be in the industry of media, right? Mm -hmm. We want to be in the communication field, whether we're broadcasting, doing behind the scenes. We have a tend to overreact to every situation. After the game happened on Thursday Night Football, you got guys like Booger McFarlane and, and guys who used to play NFL, who used to play in the position, who used to play at NFL, excuse me, talk about, well, he tried to commit murder. I've never seen someone take another helmet and bash somebody upside the head with that. Do you not remember the sport that you're playing is violent at, in, it, in itself? It's a violent sport. It's, for it's, there's, people, there's no room for You stuff can like literally that. dislocate your kneecap running a route. No, yeah. So it's like, hold up, we act like we've never seen fight before in the NFL. Brandon Jacobs versus Muhammad. Um, Wilkins, Wilson, we've never seen Brandon, Brandon Jacobs versus Dante Hill. Andre Johnson versus Courtly, Cortland um, Finnegan. So we act like we've never seen fights before in the NFL. Get, granted, yes, I agree that the, that action was a little, you know what I mean, it was a little out there. He did. I believe he should have got suspended at it least six games. It was extremely game. over the it top. Was extreme game. It was extremely over the top. But you got to remember this. Miles Garrett is not the one that instigated a fight. Because they're already up 21-7 with eight seconds left to go in the game. So it was like, if you guys see the replay, you could clearly see Rudolph trying to take his helmet off. When you take a helmet off on the football field, 
you'd be like, you'd be like, yo, listen, you trying to start a fight. Like the gloves. You're trying to start a fight. Like the gloves don't think just when you see someone take the, the helmet off, don't think it's going to be, oh, we're going to have kumbaya, we're going to sing, <laughs> we're going to have some tea and coffee together. Like, no, you initiate, you want smoke. You don't so want someone to whack the helmet, though. I mean, but it's like, I grant it, this yes, is just what, he did, and then what, what he, he did, did was over the top. But to act like people saying, well, he tried to commit murder, this and that. Now, granted, if he did connect with the crown of the helmet to his temple, could have been very bloody, very nasty scene. But granted, thank God he did it. But I'm saying is this too. Miles and Garrett was, did but, deserve the suspension, but let's not forget that like Mason Rudolph wasn't the one who instigated We, well, we, we also got to remember it was suspension. completely blind. That, that shot that he put on Mason Rudolph was completely blind. So he was throwing the helmet no matter where it was going, he couldn't completely see. There was an offensive lineman already in his face. Yeah, you got two okay, so Steelers he has, holding he no idea, backs. But I gotta, I gotta say, him attempting that action, and if he did connect to the temple, that could have caused something huge. Yeah. And I think that's what they're looking at. Yeah. Yes, once Mason Rudolph got hit, he threw his hands up in the air acting like, hey, why aren't you making this call? So it really didn't look as bad of a hit as it actually was. Um, where, But in the end, it could it could have, have been, yes. I feel like the, he really got suspended effect, because of him. what could have happened. That's my opinion. Like, first what could have happened. You have to send an example out of it. But the thing like, is, it's like, what is the amount of games he's going to miss? It's just indefinite. We know he's going to be out for the rest of the season. Does mm -hmm. that include playoffs? Does that include next yes. season? It does include playoffs. I, I think it does include playoffs, but you're going to say I don't know. I don't know how it would affect for next season. I mean, Josh Gordon was suspended indefinitely. I think. For weed. I think it's well, just, because Josh Gordon has had a history of. But this that's stuff. weed. That's not causing any problems. I mean, like we're we're Miles looking Miles Garrett's at, a known dirty but, but, player. No, Miles Garrett's not he's, a known dirty. He injured he's Trevor Simeon. He injured Trevor Simeon last year. First of all, last year anybody could have got is any, him, nobody nobody nobody. Him, but anyone could have got injured on that play. We've seen guys dislocate we have ankles seen every time in NFL. We've seen clean hits. So that wasn't a clean hit. He was outside the pocket. You as. As, all, as a what defensive you lineman, you're Trevor allowed Simmons. to hit the quarterback outside we're the pocket. We're talking about Mason Rudolph or Trevor Simmons. Yes, he was outside the pocket. Wait, was he not? We're talking about Mason Rudolph or Trevor Simmons. Trevor say, Simeon. Okay, there yes. we go. He was out. Was he not allowed to hit Simeon outside the he pocket? He was, but it was yeah. still wasn't the cleanest hit. But at the end of the day, their job as a defensive lineman is to get to the I quarterback. Get that. That's what Mason. That's what Miles Garrett did. I'm not so comparing what, Miles Garrett. To now, granted, the injury was terrible, but listen, injuries happen all the time. They do happen. So I was like, what's the big deal? I just, think that we just the media we just overreact to everything because we're always looking for a story. We're always nitpicking. Oh well, he should be put in jail. He should be fired. That's he should be not calm. Guys, just let's, let's calm let's down. Be, let's, let's be come, realistic. Let's be, realistic. Let's be yeah. Let's be yeah. very realistic. That shot is not worth jail time. It's, it's not. not worth I've seen worse. Ruining a career. It's not worth yeah ruining a career. I've seen worse, it's yeah. worth. It's worth just handling it how the NFL should handle it, which is. Suspend him yeah. for a period of time and let him come back and let him learn from his lesson. Because when he's not playing, how's he making his money at that? At, I think that he point? will. I think he will. I haven't seen Miles Garrett to be such a you know dirty player, but I think he will. Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very very special guest. Took his time out of his day to come here to his former alumni, Monmouth University, 1996 class graduate. He's a six-time Emmy Award winner for camera operations. He's done live production studio, studio production. He's done a whole bunch of stuff for NBC, Olympics, HBO Boxing. Man, I could sit here all day and talk about this man's resume. We got Todd Paladino in the studio coming up here next on First and Ten. Don't miss it. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Back here to first and ten. So you guys see at the monitors behind me, um, Monmouth played Kansas over the weekend, and 
really blew up. So if you guys don't know, George Pappas, down by 55, stole the ball from a Kansas player and dunked it, went viral all over social media, got two million, two million views on SportsCenter, got about a million views on House of Highlights, comments, reposts, everything. So my question to you guys, do you agree with what George Pappas did? Remember, the guy, we're down to Kansas, the fifth-ranked team in the country, down by almost 55. We're down by almost the exact points that we scored to Kansas, stole the ball, dunked it. Do you agree with what he did, yes or no? I absolutely agree. I mean, it's Kansas. What do you expect? Oh, excuse me one second. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Stephen. Oh, Lord. If you don't know, we have a first and ten fantasy oh, league, and I just so happened to score the most points this week against Nicholas Presto. I beat him by almost 200 points. Oh, yes. Actually, he, Who beat Presto? One less. I beat Presto by 200 okay. points. I, I, I'll allow it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Every, yes, thank thank you. congratulations. My okay, first award of the season, two and two on the road here. Only up for now. <laughs> but like I was saying about George Pappas, you know, it's Kansas. They're a top five school in the nation. They have NBA talent coming in every single year. We're Monmouth, a mid-major school. We play big schools like that maybe once or twice every year to challenge our players, get money from the schools. And we don't expect to win these games. We like to keep it close. If we don't keep it close, oh well. I mean, Kansas was dribbling the ball with like 17 seconds left. Pap was like, you know what? I'm going to dunk. I'm going to show my name on national television, get some publicity, you know? Dunks it, flexes, says some profane language. And he gets teed up for it, which I think is kind of ridiculous. I mean, they're up 55 with four seconds left. You really need to team up for that. And it blew up on social media. I think it was great for the school, great for him. Overall, just a great time. So I am, I'm not known as a sports guy here at Hawk TV. I never come on a sports show. But we're also we were talking about this, and I needed to say something because, A, I got to support my Hawks, but also this whole thing is stupid, like the outrage over it. Let the kid play. He's got what? Four seconds left in the game, why not just let him play? He knows he's not going to win. He knows he's probably never going to play Kansas again or a team of this caliber probably again in his career. Why not? Why not take the ball? Why not go for it? Sure, people are saying it's a matter of disrespect, but you know what? Screw Kansas. They got, just go back to your cornfields, stop complaining, and just, wow. just let wow. the kid play the ball, enjoy the game. Like, yeah, fine. Get heated over his, his comments after the shot. Fine, whatever. I get that. But, like, if he hadn't said that and he had just dunked it, whatever. Just, 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 you know, like, just let the kid play. I, I, I agree. Uh, I, I think it was ridiculous to get upset about this. You know, uh, you know, I think a lot of these games where we play big schools, uh, it, it, it's good for us because, you know, we get the money out of it, and we also get some publicity. This was a perfect way to get publicity for the school. Um, George Fappas did absolutely nothing wrong in this play because, you know what, you're playing the game of basketball. The game of basketball, you're allowed to steal the ball, and you're allowed to dunk. That's exactly what he did here. He still had time on the clock. You know, again, like, it, we've won, and we've won games against high-playing play, teams. We yes, won against UCLA right. a couple years ago. Uh, we've won a, a few, against a few others more recently um, in the last about four years. But, like, I don't know. Like, especially the commentators in the clip, if you hear them, they're, like, they're, they're, they're complaining about Monmouth. Like, oh, so, like, that ain't right. Like, no, 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 no. Like, no. Let the kid play. I, I just, it just irritates me so much that everyone's getting upset. And like you can see online on Instagram, everyone agrees with it. Like the outrage that people are mad about it, not everyone. I think a ma yeah, yeah, majority of people still, though. All right. Here, here's my take on this. So as we're taught when we play sports, you play into the whistle, you play into the end of the game. I got no problem with this personally at all. I don't mind it whatsoever. But I'm 50-50. My thing is, it's like, listen, you can take the ball, you can dunk it, because pretty much the game is over. We got blown out, okay? But the game was over before tip-off, all right? The game was already decided before tip-off. We knew Kansas was going to beat us. But my thing is, after you dunk the ball, you talking junk. My th hold up, here's the I thing. Get that. You should have had that energy in the beginning of the game. Why did you come with all that smoke in the beginning? You were, yeah, I don't give a bleep. I don't give a bleep. Dude, you got blown out on national television by the same amount of points you put up on the scoreboard. What are you talking about? You don't get. You should have gave a bleep in the beginning of the game. So my thing is this: we play into the whistle. I don't mind that, but the fact that you go says, "Well, I don't give a bleep. For, for what?" And 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 to give credit to Coach Rice, he did go into press conferences. He addressed the team after. He said, "Listen, that's not what Mammoth basketball is about. Okay, that's not what the program is about." But now looking back at it. How, how much this blew up on Sports Center? Two million views, about 12,000 comments. House of Highlights reposted it. Ball is Life reposted it. Do you think that we know athletics? Athletics like, oh, this is not a good look for us. Uh, you know, this shows that players 
or, you know, lack of respect of the game. But what does Monmouth love, what does any school, low mid-major school love to do? We love to get publicity. All publicity and you is good publicity. Coach Rice, I know, the I bench. know Coach Rice yeah. how he does. Remember that Gave it to up. them in the locker room. But he said, man, he's like, wow, we got all these views. You know what I mean? You know, come, Pap is coming to Monmouth. You know, I apologize for what I said to you. Because athletics loves when Monmouth does something and it blows up on the internet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the thing. If it gives Monmouth publicity, fine by it. But my thing is, is this. When you see basketball games and it's a blowout or the game's already decided, what do the players do? They dribble out the clock. And mm -hmm. you be like, you shake hands after. That, when you did that, is just a sign of disrespect. Not to Kansas. And I, I agree. Mean, I don't care what Kansas does, but it's just a sign of disrespect to the game. Because, bro, you already lost, man. I agree. I think his comments at the end weren't called for. But yeah. I, don't, I don't disagree with his actions up till then. Yeah, I, I'm fit, that's why I'm just saying I'm 50-50. I don't care if you stole the ball, dunk it, the game's already over. But it's like you got to show up like, yeah, I don't give up. Bro, you should have had that same energy from tip-off. That's I agree with that. He probably I agree. had, had that smoke off. energy that you wanted with Kansas. Had that from tip-off. Don't bro. try and That's act it. Don't like try you're, you're a big guy. guy. It's not like tough, blah, it was blah, even blah. close. You yeah, know, it's not like you, you dunked and maybe it was still a two-point difference. Like, yeah. no. That's you're a still completely different. And I think Kansas is playing a lot different. If that right, of course. They wouldn't be stopping and, like, just ending the game, acting like the game was over if they had, you know, if it was that close of a score. But it just wasn't. And, and I, I agree with people, like I said, I'm 50-50 on this, because we, we all go to Monmouth, we don't really have a problem if it gives us more publicity, so yeah. maybe, mm -hmm. maybe And we want our team to be it, good, it, though. It, it yeah. will help yeah. bring us, yeah. you know, tuition, you know, debt down. <laughs> maybe, down. yeah. Maybe, you know what I mean? Even though I, it's not going to hurt. Not going to hurt. But it doesn't hurt. But all I'm just saying is it's just had that smoke, had that same energy from, from tip-off when you had. Because, like, every basketball game you watch when it's a blowout, dribble out the clock, all right, good game, good game, coaches, good game. You go your separate ways. And my, that's, you know what I mean? That's not really a good look on I get this. that. I get but that. But again, I don't got a problem with it. But I'm just saying, I can see why old folks are mad about it. That's it. So, Monmouth is currently one and three right now. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think we make it to the MAC Conference title championship? Do you think we go far this year? Because one and three, I mean, we're still early in the schedule. We haven't started conference play yet. I think this team, from what I've seen, is still young. They're still working together. It's a lot of new guys on the team. I think we have some potential from the practice clips I've seen. Um, but, but, you know, and we have one, our first home game, I believe, is... Not is, until November 23rd or so something like that. So I think once they get home and, and once you see them play here and get the atmosphere of, of, of everyone kind of backing them, we'll see really how they shine and how mm -hmm. they work. Yeah. Um, but, again, it is early in the season. I know I was at... Uh, the the MAC championship last year, I got to work it, and then I went back for the championship game against Iona. I think that that team, when we ended, throughout the tournament was really well, and then, again, obviously the last game was, was very disappointing, but I think if we had the energy now that we've had throughout that tournament, I think we really have a shot to win the whole thing this year. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I mean, obviously we all know Iona's been running the, the MAC for a very long time. But um, I think because Iona had graduated a lot, they're, they're a lot younger of a team. I think this, this Mammoth team, I think if they want to have a shot to, to win a MAC title, I think this is going to be their year to do it. I, th I think so, too. Yeah. I think it all depends on – I haven't really seen Ray Salne playing, who's probably arguably one of the best players on the team. I think it all depends on Marcus McClary. If you guys don't know, I've been a couple of their practices. He is their best defender, and he has improved his offensive game. And he's been a vocal leader – in that locker room. He's a junior now, so he's been a vocal leader in that locker room, on the court. So I feel like he's going to be the X factor for them to get to the conference title, but they're going to lose to Iona. Let's just be real. We lost With that attitude the past we are. four years. That Ain't attitude. Nothing Look, I'm telling you, I was changing. at that game. I was at every single game of the MAC tournament last year. What was the year. score? Think, Iona. Don't worry about that. Okay. That's, 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 last that's, 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 that's last year. Don't worry about it. That's last year. That was a different team. We can do it. We can get there, but let's see if we can win it. All right, guys, coming up here next on first and 10, Kirk Money Cousins came back, arguably the biggest comeback in his career, arguably, to say the least. We're going to talk, we're going to talk about that more here on first and 10 on Hawk TV. Stay tuned. Mom, I got it. What are you doing in there? I got stuck. Oh. Are you a dog? I wouldn't do that. Have you seen the pliers? Where'd you find those? It's not your birthday. Sorry. Bye, Grandpa. Bye, Grandpa! Take care of yourself. What are you doing? 
doing? What are you looking for? Welcome back to First and Ten. Kirk Cousins Heroics versus the Denver Broncos. Down by 20 at halftime. Came back and scored three touchdowns. Threw for over 319 yards. And cut the huge W against the Denver Broncos. One of the best defensive teams in the National Football League. Guys, has Kirk Cousins finally found himself a home in Minnesota? Um, yeah, he has. I'm going to say he has. I think last year was kind of a growing period for him. Um, his first year with the Vikings. Uh, uh, but I think he's really found himself. His last nine games, Worlds, one pick. Wow, impressive. And he's uh, uh, he's 21 and three this year, uh, 21 touchdowns and three picks. He's got over 20, uh, 2,700 passing yards. Um, and again, a game against and and the and he's got two of his picks against. And he had a really bad game against Green Bay where he threw two interceptions. Other, other than that, he's only got one interception against the Eagles. Um, but he's been great. He's got a QBR of 114 and um, 0.8. He's, he's been, I think, a bright spot for this Vikings team, although I think the, the majority of their success has been off the back of Dalvin Cook, who's led them um, rushing the football. Eddie? Well, I don't even think it's necessarily about Kirk Cousins finding a home because I felt like he had a home in Washington. I think this is more about him finally being a part of a system that fits his style of play and what he brings to the table, all of the things that he does well. Um, I don't think he was utilized the right way in Washington. They are more of um, a West Coast type of offense, you know, running gun type things. Mm -hmm. When um, he gets to Minnesota, things are more like a pro style. Um, they have a very, very good running game to fall back on with Dalvin Cook. And they have an amazing defense. So I think it just, you know, it's a nod to him and what he can do when given the right opportunity with the right people around him. I say he has, and I could go as far as say, there should be a reason why isn't he in the MVP conversation? Why not? I, I mean, I, I get that. I wouldn't go quite that far yet. No, but, but listen, I'm going to tell you why. There, why is he should not be in the MVP conversation? Look at his numbers. This is probably right, his here, best year in Minnesota. Right. Look, mm -hmm. 21 touchdowns. He's only had one other year in no, but, Minnesota. But listen, his best year, like overall, I'm talking okay. about his career, right. 21 okay. touchdowns. Three interceptions, 2,756 yards. 2,756 yards. So you look at the best. Wilson's the MVP candidate, so is Lamar yeah. Jackson. Has thrown more yards than Lamar Jackson. More touchdown passes, mm -hmm. better interception ratio. He's only two touchdown passes behind Wilson, and is right up there neck and neck. Actually, he has thrown for 20 more yards than Russell Wilson has. The Vikings are 8-3. and three, Came back, historic mm -hmm. performance against the Denver Broncos, Le even though that defense is not what it used to be when they won the Super Bowl a couple years ago, no, it's still, not. A it's still, it's still a good defensive team. They still got Von Miller there. Still a good defensive team. Down 20 at halftime. Mm -hmm. Down 23 to 7 going into the fourth quarter and say, you know what, this is my time to shine. Kirk Money mm -hmm. Cousins, give me the football. I'm going to win you guys the game. Mm -hmm. And 29 out of 35 passes yeah. he completed. Mm -hmm. All right. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, but put it this way, Rose. When you start getting in a conversation like that for the MVP race, when it comes down to discussions like that, you have to ask yourself, can this man lead my franchise to a Super Bowl? Now, me personally, yeah. for Kirk and Kirk Cousins' situation, I don't think so. That's I'm, just me personally. I'm, I'm going to take it back to you. What is the MVP award given to? Is it the, the most playoffs? valuable player? Or is it a it's regular season, season award? It's a regular, it's a regular, regular season, season award. award. I'm giving it to the person who mm. has had the best regular season. Absolutely. Not going to playoffs. Like, say if Lamar Jackson wins and he stinks it up in the playoffs, Lamar Jackson still have, probably had one of the best years in the 2019-2020 season. Mm. That's yeah. what people forget. Like, regular season so far, mm. obviously, he can make an argument. He's right behind Wilson. You know, I think Wilson's the favorite right now. People have Lamar Jackson. We could debate that another day. But he's right behind Russell Wilson. Numbers yeah. are pretty much similar. Yeah. So eight and three record, you beat the Denver Broncos. Yeah. You're pretty think, much second in the NFC North behind the yeah. Packers, who what lost one or two games. They've lost one game to the Eagles. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. Kirk Money Cousins. They're not two games. But yeah. 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 But right. they're, they're, I don't see why not. He's having an outstanding year this mm -hmm. year. I think the the thing for Kirk Cousins that that has caught my eye with him, 
um, is that he's been able to play in big spots. Mm -hmm. He won a night game against um, the Redskins. He won in Dallas on, I believe, a Sunday night game. Mm -hmm. Those are games where normally you'd see him fold. Yeah. You'd mm -hmm. normally see him throw, like, three picks. Uh, and, I mean, granted, he's only thrown three picks this season. But the thing with the whole MVP race, here's, here's my point um, on the MVP award. It's given to the most valuable player on their team. If you put another quarterback in to the um, to the Vikings team, I don't think they're I, I don't see a lot changing due to how great their team is built around him. You've got arguably the best wide receiver duo with Thielen and Diggs. Granted, uh, Thielen's out right now, but still he's been there for a decent amount Diggs, of time. Stephon Diggs oh, is Stephon Diggs is uh, he, he's good. He is. He's, 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 he's inconsistent. He's inconsistent. Yeah. But he's still good, though. He, he showed good. up last and you got, uh, He showed up last and you night, got, but he's still And you still, don't forget, you still have Dalvin Cook, who's, uh, in my opinion, I think a top, mm -hmm. top, five. top five running yeah, back in the league. Five. You, you know, he's, this, this offense has, has been great this year, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't contribute all that success to mm -hmm. Kirk Cousins. Granted, yeah, he's been great this year. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. But I don't think all of that success can be – on Kirk Cousins. But That's like, when we look at the MVP race, we look at, okay, who is the most mm -hmm. valuable player on our team? Who's contributing? He has contributed a big part. He is the quarterback of Crown. Oh, no, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying I'm not saying he's not. I'm not saying he's not. But I'm just saying, if you look, if you're going to go into the MVP conversation, mm -hmm. if you were to look at Russell Wilson, who does he got besides DK Metcalf on that offense to go to entire locker? No one. Exactly. And who does Lamar Jackson have on that offense besides Hollywood Brown? No one. I mean, he has Mark Ingram in the yeah, back. Yeah, he's got Mark Ingram. But, I, I, I mean, again, Kirk Cousins has – has Pro Bowl caliber talent all around him on that offense. But he's used a lot. He oh, and he's used a lot. And he's used a lot. Ability. Oh, and I'm not saying he isn't. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying if you were to give an MVP award to me, it's the person that brings the most value to that team. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that uh, right now I believe is Russell Wilson. I'm with you on that. Well, I'd like to mention, Dalvin Cook didn't really show up last night, too. So, no, they did. really he had – well, He did it. 60, well, yeah, 64 yards? Something. Mm -hmm. that, that usually something Dalvin like Cook gets you at least anywhere between yeah. 90 and 100 he's, yards rushing. He, he's always someone – for fantasy, you yeah. can always pencil in for like 20, 25 points. Yeah, well, if we play in PPR or not yeah, PPR. Well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. to that point, Rose, for, for me, I, I would ask you, when you're thinking about a quarterback for MVP, is Kirk Cousins a name that pops in your head immediately? When you think of the word MVP. Not immediately because we're so hyped up on Lamar Jackson mm -hmm. and Russell Wilson. But and that's we don't what really I'm look at anyone else. But, that's but what like I'm if you stats but, aside. but a lot of people don't really watch Minnesota's like, wow, this team is actually good. No. Wow, yeah. Cousins actually really having a good year. Exactly. And I think and you look and, at the numbers, think, you're like, whoa. And I think uh, t to on your point, if you were to go and to to uh, I think their biggest game of the season, uh, I believe it's the second to last week of the season when they play the Packers. In Minnesota, I think that's going to be that's Cousins' be big, big test. Beat the Packers. Because if he's able he to beat might, the Packers, yeah. uh, I think that's going to raise some eyes to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, and especially because the, I think if both teams went out, um, then I believe if they beat the Packers then, they've got a shot. I think they're going to win the NFC North if that happens, mm -hmm. which obviously um, is a huge deal in a lot of people's eyes. That's yeah, cool. And I think they're in prime position too, like I said. The only thing that I'm worried about the Vikings is just their defense. But mm -hmm. over time, maybe they could, you know, add something. No, they have a really running. solid defense, they do have a solid too. Defense, uh, yeah. Well, I, 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 they say they have a solid defense, but I haven't really seen them, like, just physically put that beat down on teams. Well, put it this end. way. Put it this way. We could go back to the game Sunday. Mm -hmm. Minnesota scored three unanswered touchdowns in the fourth quarter. That mm -hmm. defense had to have been doing something right. I mean, well, I mean, for, I mean, I mean look who's their quarterback for, for them, the Broncos. For them to swing that look, game. Look who the quarterback you know? is for the Broncos, that's, 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 that's true, but again, there's defense still has to not even allow a field goal for yeah. that to happen. Exactly. And back to that, Minnesota only had the ball for 23 minutes mm -hmm. and 17 seconds. So yeah. time of possession weighs heavy on this. So mm -hmm. you figure that defense was out there longer than Kirk Cousins and company were out there. So they had to have done something right. Yeah. You know? All, right. All, right. All right, guys, that is it for first and 10. We'll be back next week here to talk about some more sports because no one does it better than we do. Thank you, Todd Palladino, for joining us. Great discussion overall. See you guys next week. Stay tuned.